Build, what is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Uh, inspired by the card game, Shit Happens, and created by comedy writer Andy Breckman, the Misery Index is the only comedy game show where you can make a fortune out of other people's misfortune. Get it? Uh, hosted by the incomparable Jamila Jamil and your four best friends in the world, the Tenderloins. The show is absolutely hilarious, and it's actually one of the most fun game shows to come along in a very long time. I'm very excited about it. Uh, joining me now to talk about the show and the myriad of other crazy things they got going on from the Tenderloins. Oh man, Joe Gatto is here. James Murray is here. Brian Quinn is here. Ladies and gentlemen, how we feel about the boys? Are you excited they're here? I'm excited. They're, they're excited. So you must be excited, too. We're going to bring them out in just a second. I, I believe we have a peek at the show first. So you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's run that clip. Man contracts super gonorrhea. I hate when bad things happen to the penis. That's Sal's Tinder profile tagline. <laughs> the globe for the world's most miserable true stories, all you have to do is tell us where it lands on the misery index. In sausage making ordeal, man cut off own oh arm. God. Why okay. does he look so happy? <laughs> Check out this little cutie. No, no, no. This spider is living in this man. Yeah, it came out, I was like, hey, what's up? Everything good? I'll see you later. We can only go up from here. You don't have to jump if you don't want to. I'm not gonna push you. <laughs> I've always considered that as a breakup option, but never had the guts to do it. <laughs> this is the only show where contestants can make a fortune off of other people's misfortune. That is a live leech pulled out of a man's nose. Oh my god! Things get real miserable real okay. quick. <laughs> yes. Now we got it, nigga! Dead rat in my dang red book. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! You really are the mistress of misery. Thank you. The stars of Impractical Jokers join host Jamila Jamil in the Misery Index. Oh, guys, make some noise. The Tenderloin, Joe James, Hi, and Brian right here. Hi. Do it up. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, settle down. Guys, all right, that's, <laughs> thank you. That's enough. Everyone, please sit down. Please, everyone in the back. There you already, can see there's a sitting. standing ovation. So many people. They're yeah. still clapping. They're all sitting. They can't tell. There are seven, 8,000 people in this room right now. You can't tell at home, but we have packed this building packed. to the rafters. <laughs> People yes. sitting on people. They're hanging from lights right now. Right, let's talk about you. Look at this. Do you want to? You see okay. shoes. Look at this. Why oh, thank you. Top to bottom. We yeah. can't talk about shoes without talking about Brian's shoes right now. Look at these. Yeah. These are uh, Star Wars. Yes, they are, sir. Millennium Falcon, X-Wings, TIE Fighters, Incas. Everywhere I would go, people are asking me where they get them. Yep. So I'm looking for an endorsement <laughs> deal right now from Incas. <laughs> yeah, I wear these. I wear these a lot. Yeah. They're comfy. They look wonderful. I got boot versions, too. Do you really? Do you want to talk about this all day? This is the whole this, show. They go I to told you. We're going to yeah. do 20 minutes on this, four minutes on this, and that's yeah, it. Then we'll go home. What on me are you going to compliment? Uh, where do we begin? I like that watch. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, yeah, yeah, it's old. old. I scanned you real fast. <laughs> just 10 minutes ago, we just had the conversation. It's an old watch. <laughs> that's just an old watch 10 minutes ago. That's not a sentiment behind the old watch. Is there not? Or is he just yeah. too lazy to get a new watch? Exactly. He's, right. he's too lazy to even wind or set the watch to the correct time. It hasn't worked in years. What does it say? When did, did you give what up? What times are it? It says it's 9.14 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, October 27th. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice little memory of when you just stopped yeah. giving a shit. There it is. That was plug. a great that morning. A moment. Yeah. Oh, we could curse? Oh, yeah. You can, it's the internet. Oh, it's fucking great. <laughs> it's a wild it's a west out here, to curse. He just said I could fucking curse. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, gentlemen, congratulations. This show is, is fantastic. I was telling you back there, I got a chance to see a bunch of episodes. You are very funny. Uh, humanity is terrible. It's everything you want in a half hour. It is wonderful. Uh, how are, you, are you guys excited for the world to see it? We're still a couple of weeks out. Uh, it's, it's almost game time. How are you feeling right well, now? We got to see the premiere, and we were really ex excited to see it because, you know, the world sucks. You know, life sucks. Everybody knows that, so it's a fun way to actually... Uh, you know, t make light of terrible things that are happening and just try to laugh because if we don't laugh, then what are we doing? 
crying, I believe. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Uh, That's the opposite. And weeping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. The weeping. other fun thing that we didn't expect when we made the show was there's real money. People are competing for a lot of money. And it, for many of the contestants, it was like life-changing money to paying off a massive amount of debt they have. Yeah. Or for one contestant, he was going to take his wife on the honeymoon they never could afford to take. And so you feel uh, an emotional responsibility to help these contestants win, you know? Yeah, and the commercial breaks because, uh, like, they actually, when they go to commercial, they actually stop down for 10 minutes. Uh, they would tell us, you'd be having fun, and they'll be like, yeah, I need a surgery. <laughs> and you'd be like, oh, man, now, now yeah. I got to win you. Most people with surgery. Yeah, most people came in for surgeries, trying to win a surgery. Uh, yeah, I mean, the biggest happy thing for me was uh, Jamila. She turned out to be yeah. just a superior human being. Like, I really love her. She's a great friend. Yeah, yeah, she's been great with the group. Too. She was here, but she had nothing but terrible things to say about you guys. Yeah. 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 That's why she won't show up with us. That's yeah. Why yeah, yeah, doing yeah, it separate. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, yeah. but we were all uh, huge good, uh, the Good Place fans Absolutely. before this show, so... You, and you guys were a part of the project first, right? She came on after you guys joined, so that was yeah. like a nice yeah, little surprise. Like, let's get the polar opposite of these yeah. four dopes, <laughs> and let's get uh, Jamila, yeah. Uh, and she's also, I mean, you know that she's going to be funny, because, again, she's on a very funny show, and she's fantastic there, but she's super fast, man. I was yeah. amazing how she was keeping up with you guys and firing back. Yeah. I mean, she's hosted before she was big here in the States. So that's what she did. She was a host over in the U.K. and stuff, so she kind of had those chops already. Uh, but, yeah, is that what it's been like? Have you guys, uh, yeah, she's dishing it out just as much as you guys are. Well, that, they actually changed the format of the show, too. Did they really? Give us more time to talk because she jumped in and the conversations were so fun and funny. They actually, when we did a first rehearsal, they changed the gameplay a little bit to bring down the amount of rounds so we could have more time to banter. Oh, so smart. it was it was fun. And yeah. that actually, it was smart by the producers to do that because it just made a better product, I think. Yeah. She's great. And if you follow her on, on uh, like, social media, she's a big advocate for everything. Yeah. And I advocate for nothing. So, like, before we were going to work with her, I was like, oh, man, I don't know if we're going to get along because I really just don't give a shit about anything. Yeah. Just because I'm depressed, I just want to be home a lot, you know? what I mean? And then it turned out that, like, uh, she's just, I mean, I can't tell you how much I love this woman. Yeah. She's like a real pal. Yeah, I like her a lot. She's I'll great. tell you what, I, I never understood what you said. I really didn't. He, he was always like, I just want to be home. I want to be home with your cats, and yeah. you know? And I just got a puppy. My fiance got me a puppy, and I just want to be home with my puppy. want to be home. So, guys, thank you so much for coming. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get home to that puppy. Yeah. Gotta get, you, you get. get yourself a Nintendo, my friend. Yeah. You're yeah. done. You're done. That's where that's where Sal is. Sal's at your house with your yeah. puppy. <laughs> He's like, screw that interview. I'm gonna sit in this yeah. with a puppy. To be fair, it's probably a very cute puppy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's adorable. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, we were talking a little bit about this briefly, and we'll get into it in detail in a minute, but just for context, uh, of course, your show, uh, Impractical Jokers, season eight, you got the cruise coming up. You're going to be at Radio City. You guys are doing so many things. I imagine you're at a point where you can do whatever you want. So I, I, I'm curious well, what it was. that's why we're here at Built. Exactly. Yeah, we, and said, that's we said, if we don't get to sit down with Matt, we're shutting everything down. And my heart grew three sizes that day. <laughs> I will tell you that. Um, but seriously, you can do anything you want. What was it about this show that you were like, oh, we got to get involved. This looks like a lot of fun. It's a perfect fit for what we do in Jokers. They're, and yeah. the perfect fit for our, for our friendship. You know, our whole lives, 30 years, we've been best friends. And we've been doing this kind of like embarrassing humor, things like that. Some of the clips on Misery Index are clips from Jokers. Yeah. And we have to rate ourselves on how miserable it was to get your nipples pierced, yeah. you know? Well, present company. <laughs> when we, uh, when, when we, we actually, when we made Jokers, we all said this is lightning in a bottle for us. This is the way that we make each other laugh. That's how we make the world laugh. It was great. So when they brought this to us, we were like kind of hesitant actually. When we were like, we're not really game show guys or whatever. Oh, some guy just walked by and looked in the window. Can they see? Because he dismissed <laughs> us. He walked, he walked, he walked by like this. He goes like this. He goes. That's enough. <laughs> I, kept, I got no time for it. <laughs> that, that was Sal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Sal. <laughs> that that guy's fuck? watch says it's 927. <laughs> uh, so Dinted. I don't know what he could. He really did not no, care about No, he saw the reflection of himself. <laughs> oh, that, that I understand. <laughs> So, so we, uh, when we got this show, we we're like, all right, we, we're kind of hesitant. But this show was just us basically debating and, and talking to each other about uh, about nonsense topics. That's what our friendship is. So it was another way for us to, to do that. And I think people will enjoy when they watch it to see more of, uh, of us being us. Do you guys ever find yourself at odds with the experts that have gauged where it falls in the index? All the time. Yeah, all the time. These we're, not, we're not experts in anything. No. <laughs> well, These professionals and their professional no. opinions. I dropped out of Staten Island Community College, so I don't line up with what the professionals say a lot. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, you guys, you could be, cons- I mean, eight seasons, you're pretty much experts on embarrassing stuff happening. Do you like, right? Like, you, I would imagine few people have the experience you have after doing the show for this long. And I apologize to ask a question. I'm sure you've been asked a trillion times anytime somebody's put a microphone on your hand. But it, do, is there a, a, a moment that stands out over the eight seasons that is either the most difficult one for you or the most embarrassing time? What was the most miserable time of your life? That, that's actually not a bad question. The question we get asked the most is, uh, uh, what do you do when people recognize you? That's the question. I answer that 10 times a, a day. So I'm glad that you didn't I ask that question. Yeah. Uh, for me, it used to be like I taught my parents sex ed uh, and then uh, for an hour. And then I got then that got replaced by they put tarantulas on me. Then they got replaced by the uh, at Universal Studios, a tram ride yeah. in California. I had to pull the stop cord. Emergency, the emergency stop cord. Repeatedly. Eight, eight times in an hour. 200 people on this tram ride. A guy stood up two trams like this is like a train. Tra- he stands up, he points at me, he goes, you, when I get off this ride, I'm going to find you. Yeah, yeah. Because he was locked into the bar. You can't get out of the tram. <laughs> it shuts yeah. the gates. And his eight-year-old daughter's like, yeah, fuck him up, dad. <laughs> it was crazy. That was the worst. There are dads on edge in theme parks, oh, man. That strangely, is they were fans of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody ever recognizes us while we're shooting it. Then afterwards, they're like, you kidding me? I love that show. <laughs> then he hit you, me. Why'd you want to murder me? <laughs> uh, one of my all-time favorites is when you had to find the broken table or the weak table. And oh, you yeah. were just jumping on. Yeah, that was a lot. That was a lot of fun. That was insane. When you climbed up on the ladder. Yeah. Uh, well, they, they, they said to break it as best we can. What does better? What falls fast? My body. So they just put me as high as I can. And they went down on that one. The, the, the problem was the, the, the cushion that was underneath was askew, and my body caught momentum and caught the end of the table that wasn't cushioned. So I hit hard. We, I did to the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was a that, that was a fun one though. I I was proud of them. It's hard because our show, like you get, you feel like, oh man, I'm going through this worst thing, but you're proud of your friends because they're doing such a good job, yeah, yeah. you know. So it's a weird dynamic. And it's a give and take on that one. Sal didn't like that one. Yeah. He was like, I don't see how it'll be funny. I, and it's like that happens to us a lot. I'll be like, you just learn to trust each other and be like, he sees something I don't. If he's really fighting for it, and you trust each other and you just go with it. Or it fails miserably and we we'll get to make fun of the guy, which is yeah, great. It's yeah. a win-win. It's a win-win. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, Jamila, when she was here, she had said something really nice, actually, about you guys. The one nice thing she said uh, was that, uh, that she loved working. She was a huge fan, and what she loved about your comedy is that you guys don't punch down. And I was wondering if that's something you actively discuss when you're coming up with ideas, if that's been a, 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 an intentional sort of tenant of your comedy over the years, uh, and where you guys kind of fall on that, what you think about that. Yeah, I mean, whenever we're discussing ideas a lot, we'll just say, you know, we have a brand now, what our type of humor is, and we make sure that we're always the butt of the joke. We don't want to make people feel bad. That's not why we're doing this. We want to make each other feel bad. <laughs> we want to make our friends feel bad. That's 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 the thing. So well, I, like punching across. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, it's more like punching ladder. in the middle. It's yeah. like punching right here. <laughs> Basically, I'm just getting punched repeatedly on the yeah. show. <laughs> that's what I, feel I don't like. know. I, I, you know what? In theory, I, I think in comedy, you should be able to punch in any direction. Right. But there is something about it in the moment like i it's easy to say that but then you know you don't want to make fun of anybody that's not doing well so i guess you should punch. i hate the whole concept of punching <laughs> i don't like not it. Just, just, yeah yeah exactly that's why you were so upset when that guy said he was going to find you it wasn't that you were fearing for yourself he was just going to punch yeah. and that was just not oh make not no a mistake fan of i would have humiliated him in front of his wife and daughter <laughs> He's lucky You're he was a fan. He's lucky. <laughs> <laughs> nah, the died. six foot four gentleman yeah. that was all, all Q needs, all Q needs is three or four shots of whiskey, and he, he's good. He's good to go. Well, well, well. <laughs> you were your papers. <laughs> Speaking of ruining people's vacations, you guys got the cruise coming up. Uh, we do. The fourth, uh, the fourth, fourth annual Impractical Jokers Cruise. You know, let's hang it with like four or 5,000 fans in the Caribbean for a week. That's a good idea. <laughs> it's great. It's great fun. I mean, I mean, if nothing else, you guys have figured out how to get paid for a vacation, which yeah. is kind of amazing. Yeah. Uh, mm, can I correct you? Please. Okay. okay. <laughs> no, right. We're yes. not on vacation. Yeah. Uh, not? One, we're not on vacation. <laughs> Two, uh, the cruise actually, I, I'm going to pull back, doesn't pay that much for us. We kind of do it like because we love connecting with the fans and stuff like that and then the little amount that it does pay you have like cockroaches family members coming out yeah <laughs> can i get a room yeah and that comes out of your end by the end i end up losing yeah. money on the cruises <laughs> but it's really like for us it's just an opportunity to one-on-one connect with the fans and like have a good time and yeah. remind you what's what life and is then to be in like a hundred fans then your family reunion is that what happens on the yeah. bus <laughs> 
collectively, we're all down two point three million dollars from the cruise. <laughs> we're, we're, trapped on, we're trapped on the boat. We the lose money on the cruises. Well, I don't. My most of my family's dead. <laughs> That's true. Joe. Joe's very lucky. His mother and father yeah, died very early. Very young. Yeah. yeah, I don't have most of my family anymore. So I really win in that situation. Joey. I my percentage. What do you do with those? What do you do? Well, well, you know, they all bring their parents, and their parents, you know, suck them dry. Mine have been dead for years. Oh, so I really oh, am coming out on the winning Joe does Joe this thing. <laughs> where he will bring up his dead parents for a punchline at any moment. And, he, and he's got this thing where it's like, it, like, all right, you were FaceTiming your mom on the bus one time, and Joe goes, Joe's goes, oh, I'm going to FaceTime my mom, too. And he pulls up a picture of a skeleton. <laughs> And he's You'd be surprised how many situations if you Google skeleton blank. It's like Florida, man. You can find a skeleton doing anything. It's crazy. If you say, oh, I took a bike ride in Central Park with my mom this yeah. weekend, yeah. he will find a picture of a skeleton on a bike <laughs> yeah. and be like, here's my mom and like, me. Like, oh, my mom went. She loved you. You got to check out Casanova. It's just people don't know how to react to the joke. I don't know how to react to the <laughs> joke. <laughs> So I don't know what direction you're punching in at that point. I don't know. Punching myself in the face. Down. He's punching six feet down at that point. <laughs> six feet under. Uh, so that's, that's coming up. Before you guys get on the boat, though, in, in January, you've got a huge deal. You're back at Radio City, yeah. which yeah. is massive. The pre-sale was yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's on sale today. And it's on sale today. It's fantastic. Uh, and, and keep me honest here, it's your second time at Radio City, right? Or second time. Second, second time, but we, we, we played, played three nights, right? We played three nights. Yeah. Three nights. yeah. That is crazy. What does that feel like for you guys to be on that freaking stage? I mean, that's it. Well, as, as a New Yorker, there's nothing better. You know, we, we walked out on stage that first night at Radio City two, three years ago, and it, it, you look out at these, you know, thousands of people, and, and it's an iconic New York venue. Yeah. That, and we did Madison Square Garden last year, yeah. and it was just shocking, shocking. It was. We, we were. I'm sorry, but you gone? I was just going to say, we're no Rockettes, but go ahead. We, we, we don't have the legs. Yeah. Hi, uh, yeah, like, like uh, we sold out Madison Square Garden, and like, they were like, oh, my God, you're like the 10th comedy act of a sell it out. It meant half of what playing Radio City meant. It, yeah. It's something about Radio City. Because I think we saw a lot. I, I always saw shows at Radio City growing up. More yeah. than I did at the Garden, really. Yeah. So seeing, being on the stage and looking out, it was like really just insane just to be standing. I think it's one of the only times we've been speechless. Like Absolutely. the show started that two first minutes. Radio City, and we just stood there for two minutes, and we just couldn't say anything. All yeah. The other like thing that you start. can't put a, a, a price on or a value in is that we did a show, you know, before Jokers, we were a co comedy troupe for years. We did a show in New York City, and two people bought tickets to see us perform. The tickets were five bucks each. The theater cost us $65 to rent, so we split the $55 loss four ways, That's right? the cruise ship we, business model. It's the yeah. <laughs> so to go from that show, and I remember that night, that night to go from a show of uh, two people buying tickets to Radio City or Madison Square Garden as a New Yorker is, is just awe-inspiring. It's, it's humbling. It's unbelievable. It really is. Pretty amazing. You get to do it with your friends, which is great. Like yeah. we have the opportunity where we get to do stuff together. You don't have to go home and tell your friends about it. You like live it with your friends, which is unreal. That makes it everything even more special. Did you guys stop and go, all right, we, it's Radio City. We gotta class things up a bit. Or we did. Did, we did. Yeah, we all bought new outfits, remember? Yeah, I wore a blazer. You wore a blazer. Yeah. yeah, we put a blazer on him. Yeah, yeah that was what we were we were blazer shopping. Yeah. <laughs> we went blazer <laughs> shopping. That's right. We went up the only, Hugo he, Boss. He bought the blazer but no pants. So he was <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's fine. Was, I wanted to give him a real show. Yeah. <laughs> baby steps guy. Yeah, baby steps, baby steps. <laughs> you know, but it was that usually when when we do shows uh well actually we stopped but we used to go for a sound check and we'd sit there and and, and it was funny because joe would be on stage being like can you hear me and i'd be in the 20th row going yes <laughs> and then i moved back so but radio city we purposely did not yeah. look at the stage or or we just waited until so we had that moment when the curtain opened and we walked out yeah. and it was really we all started tearing up it, it, there's nothing like playing radio city yeah yeah Amazing. Yeah, we're excited to do it again when yeah. you said you'd do it again. You said, yeah. 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 And then it's a new I had show, too, which is good. I, like, I had a bunch of guys from my firehouse came. Three of them got thrown out by security. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you guys are embarrassing me. Yeah. But they're yeah. wearing blazers. So yeah, 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 nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's at least a start. There we go. Um, that's, that's insane. You've got all that stuff going on, and you guys got a bunch of tour dates coming up. Uh, what what was the shooting schedule on this like compared to Jokers? Did you guys knock them out in a couple of days? Was yeah, this yeah. we actually got to, we did like two a day or three a day with, with this. Jokers takes us, yeah. uh, you know, we shoot for 10 months on Jokers. We're actually hitting our 200th episode this season, which is insane. Uh, hang on, in hold for applause. 200 episodes. 200 yes. Sir, I, clap, clap. 200 is a big deal. I mean, don't be the asshole that doesn't clap. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're going to be the guy. You Nobody get gets like, 200 get episodes really anymore. Sell it. Nobody does it. <laughs> I want him out of yeah. yeah, get that fucking We're guy out of here. Already, he's already I feel like I'm the bouncer. <laughs>
Uh, 200, holy Christ, man, 200 episodes. Did you guys... And uh, counting. And counting. Yeah, and, and still going. Did you do any, anything really big and different? Yeah, we, we, we did an hour-long special. We shot, it's our first ever West Coast episode. We shot, we went Hollywood for an episode. Yeah. And we have a couple of celebrity guests in the episode along with us. It's going to be great fun. Well, yeah, yeah, we got Chain Silent Bob in it. Did you really? How crazy is that? Yeah. That's out there, right? We took pictures yeah, of them online. Yeah, 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 Kevin Smith and Chain. Oh, Smith there's our out. assistant, Gabriella. Hi. Gabby! Gabby! She's waving at her own reflection. She is very. <laughs> that woman right there is extremely responsible for a lot of success of the show because she keeps us sane. She can't hear us. Yeah, she can't hear us. She'll never know. She'll never know. definitely talking bad about I'm me. I'm not going to tell her that because then we, <laughs> we got to give her a raise, and that's not happening, Gabby. Uh, yeah, we we had uh, we we got Jay and Sal Bob on the show, and it's like people reacted i mean it's Shane and bob like people reacted to them like they were gods it was awesome it was you're really fun do, you're able to do things on the west coast like ideas that we had that play better out there like we made a fake we started the episode by making a fake movie set and pretending we're directors and we take somebody who's walking by the streets and discover them I'm like this is the scene and we have to <laughs> yeah. and we have to explain the scene to this person and get them to do this crazy thing i had to get like my person come out like a porta potty and flip a hot dog cart like it was crazy yeah yeah it was fun yeah it's like these old women's flipping <laughs> yeah. hot dogs cart we also have um a we're going to show the clip tonight, so I'm sure we could say it. Uh, we have Jeff Daniels as a guest in an episode of the show coming up. Yeah. Literally, later, literally, he's going to do to kill a mockingbird that night, yeah. but he's stopping by the set of Jokers to make fart jokes. It's great. <laughs> it's great. It's amazing. Yeah, we've been yeah, yeah. pretty fortunate. Man. We've been lucky. And that guys... was funny, too, because we went to go visit him at, to kill a mockingbird, which is still on Broadway till the end of November, so go. It's awesome. And uh, he didn't know we were coming to visit him. Uh, and he said in interviews, like, oh, I love Impractical Jokers. I go home and watch Impractical Jokers. So they told him that four, what was it, an improv group? An improv group improv from group. Staten Island. So he was like, he was like, I don't know. I, it's like, I'm tired. I don't, I, they were like, trust me, go meet him. No, he said, what, they win a charity or something? Yeah, <laughs> it was really weird. So, yeah. so Jeff Daniels comes out on stage after the show to meet us. And he looks at us and he goes, i never seen a reaction like yeah. this from anybody. He goes like this, he goes, no! <laughs> Yeah. He goes, no, you get them it. out of the fucking building. <laughs> and he goes, get him out. Yeah. Get him out. He was the nicest. He was so sweet. Yeah. yeah. Anthony yeah. this out. He was like, come on out. Yeah. 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 Then we yeah, we talked to him. We, he's answering questions about Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. And you just soaking it all in. It's it was great. Yeah. It was great. What a dream, man, to sit there and do that. Dream. It's amazing. We have we do a bunch of shows here and we got a bunch of people coming through and, and you guys. Whenever we find, whenever people find out you guys are going to be on the show, no matter who's here, it's like, oh, Tenderloins, the Impractical Joke. We had Chris Jericho was just here, and he was oh, like, the guys are coming in, and I'm, uh, it always blows me away. Yeah. Everybody knows you guys and loves you guys. Who's like been the biggest surprise? Like, who who could you just not believe? I mean, Jeff Daniels sounds like he's up oh, there. I, I think the biggest one we just actually found out when we were filming the uh, L.A. episode, our one of the drivers was actually a driver uh, for Paul McCartney. Yeah. And he said that Paul McCartney loves the show, and Q is his favorite. Yeah. Yeah. And we found that out. Yeah. That Isn't that crazy? Our mind. Yeah. He, we we entertain a beetle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I I think the only one that would be more. I mean, that is like that's as close to God liking the show as you like. If Bill Murray came out and was like, "I yeah. watch Impractical Jokers," then I would just my heart would explode. Mm. But uh, yeah, uh, Paul McCartney. Yeah, was I found the out biggest. about Steve Carell over Twitter. He mm. actually tweeted back about that he watched the show and blew my mind, and that was a big one for me. Well, that's because you look like Carell. Look like him, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the, in Pret de Manger, they thought I was him, and they gave me a free meal. Yeah, they thought I was him. They, they said, excuse me, you know, a fan came in from outside and I was shopping for food. And they were like, oh, they're like, can I take a picture? I took a picture with them. And the girl behind the counter was like, and I went up, she's like, I just want to say I loved you and Bruce Almighty. Yeah. And like, what a weird quote. And I was like, uh. I was like and I know I, I know I don't sound like him, but I look like him. And I was like, like that. And, then, and she's like, do you mind if we take a picture? And I went out and I took a picture. And everybody was talking to me about how the office, how much they love me. And I was like, mm, thanks. And I took a picture. <laughs> don't and I went to pay. They're like, keep it. I'm like, okay. And I, yeah. I walked out. And I took $38 worth of Pret the Manger. And I hit the streets. <laughs> and then I tweeted. I was like, thanks. I owe you lunch, Steve Carell, because Pret the Manger just gave me a, you know, they thought I was you. He said, uh, okay, you owe me a sandwich. Then Pret the Manger chimes in and says, hey, Steve, we, we love that you're a fan of Pret the Manger. Here's a, we're going to send you a black card so you can eat for free. I didn't get a black card. I said, the hell? I was the one in Pretzel. You got a free sandwich in Elkhorn. Yeah. You don't need a free sandwich. How about this? The only black card we ever got was from Subway. Yeah. So we did commercials with Subway. And they go, wait, that's not even the best part. Yeah. They go, here's a black card. Any guys, you guys want to go Subway? I went to Subway, used a black card. They go, there's no money on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they it gave me a blank. I, Subway gave me a blank yeah, yeah. card. Yeah. Yeah. So we're that level famous. Yeah. If you need us. 
I, what can you? They're in the back. Just give them anything. You got any of those cards? <laughs> I yeah, got just a, give them the cards. Get them out of here. Get them right. what do you got? Just give them this. Give them this. Give them Joe this. and I used to be roommates downtown, right, when we first started the show. And one day after he moved out, uh, an envelope arrives in the mail. And it's uh, uh, the former tenant in our apartment had gotten a, a yearly Metro card an unlimited Metro card. And I don't know how long it lasted, but it lasted for months and months and months and never expired. And I felt like I won the goddamn lottery. Yeah. I, will qu I would have quit the TV show the to use that things. Metro card. It's little things. You're going to stuff you'd never go to in your life. Like, I'll be there. Yeah. Is, that, yeah. is there a train station near there? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm on my way. <laughs> it never stops being the little things. We get like, a, there's something called a per diem where they, like if you go to town for a few days, they give you cash money to spend on food. It's like $40. But when you get that envelope it's full cash. of $40, it's it's Best We're feeling. making it rain in the yeah. Hilton. $60. I, I can't tell you how much I make on a practical jokers, but I can tell you yeah. that I get $40 per <laughs> diem, and it is the sweetest two twenty dollars bills yeah. I've ever gotten in my life. You know, tell, yes, sir, that's right, room service. I'll have one of every soda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Kate's giving me the signal here. We got to get a couple of questions from the room. Thank you, Kate. Oh, we got at we least got two, two, minutes? two or two questions. We got two questions. Oh, you got to make them good. Yeah. So here we go. First question. Come on down. Hi. This is a question from our website. Um, someone asked. What well, who are you? Who are you? Zara. I saw I but this isn't her question. She's passing <laughs> kind of belly. Oh, yeah. Zara, it's very nice to meet you. You too. Uh, what's the funniest joke you've ever heard from someone else? Oh. What's a funny? I don't joke think I could say it. <laughs> <laughs> Internet. Oh. Uh, yeah. What's her ear? Funniest joke. That's Funny <laughs> joke. Um, I always, I always love two peanuts were walking in a park and one was assaulted. <laughs> That's I mean, not my joke. It's a classic. I love it. It's a classic. Yeah. Uh, that joke was written by Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin. True. That joke. That's true. You could Google it. You can Google it, sir, with the attitude in the back. <laughs> would not clap. All right, we've got time for one more question. Let's have it. Come on down. Hi guys. Hello. Um, hey, who are you? Just the guy with the attitude. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just wondering. My name is Zach, by the way. Hi, Zach. Nice um, Zach. I was just wondering if you guys have ever had a prank get like seriously out of hand, and how you like keep that under control. On the oh, show. Well, we have a prank that we want to do, and we don't have the the, the nerve to do it. Uh, we came up with the idea in the the pilot episode. Yeah. We want uh, the loser of the episode to have to go to a stranger's wedding, and where they say, "Speak now, or forever hold your peace." Ah, 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 ah. He's yeah, gonna you stand it. up, object to the wedding, go into detail why he objects, realize he's at the wrong wedding, yes. apologize, and leave. Yeah. We'll let you know how it goes. The only thing, yeah. the, the only thing that we stole from that punishment, I don't know if you guys remember the punishment where we uh, we made Mur uh, read a, uh, a blind. Um, uh, the postcards? Uh, yeah, no, no, the, yeah, the uh, speech. Yeah. It was a speech where we just made him throw in weird lines in between. And at the end of that punishment, we wanted to lock the door so you couldn't leave the church. <laughs> so you'd object, <laughs> say, sorry, I couldn't go. So we actually used that and borrowed that in Murray's. So I had to give this weird speech you tried Wait, you to did leave. That, that, that was you did that on purpose? Yeah, so it was locked. I, I just found that out. <laughs> I look like an idiot on TV. I've got to leave the punishment. He walked the door's locked. Authority. I got to the second exit locked, third exit. I'm trapped in the room with uh, 200 idiots. God, I, you just found Do you see how fun this job is? Yeah. You, you never told me you locked the doors. I thought I just went through the wrong doors. Yeah. Two hundred episodes, man. <laughs> exactly. But that per diem is great. Yeah. Oh, it's a forty dollars per yeah. day, people. At the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, well, guys, thanks for watching AOL Build. Uh, <laughs> is it gotta, over? We gotta go. Have Matt here. We got our, uh, that flu. That's. No, I yeah. wanted to do more. For bonus content. We can't take one more question. You, if we got one more in the room, we got one more question. These people no, can't wait for you. Nobody to gives a shit. This is a room Nobody full of empty black shit. subway no, cars. She's, That's got a she's got a question. We got one right here. Can we get a microphone on the green couch? Girl I'll keep girl. talking while we wait. There we are. Yeah. Oh, here we go. We got your microphone. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> wait, I don't know if we have her. Yeah. 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 Here, here. No, this, 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 oh, guys, this is the live mic. This is a live one. I'm really hangover today, so it's not a good day to have a close up. But I guess I have a question. Do you also spend time together? Um, you know, in your free time, and what do you do as friends? Oh, oh we got that one. Oh, yes, right, 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 right. yes. The answer on three Absolutely is together. one, two, three. No. 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 <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. We got invited to this uh, event last night. I won't say why because I don't want to embarrass him. But we went into, we, we got into it, and it was like, uh, like, look, I flew red eye. I landed at like, I just on two hours sleep. We got there. We got to the party, this, this event, right? And it is lame. It's lame. And we, within two minutes, we left. We were like, we're gone. And I, all I wanted to do was go home. And Joe was like, you want to go get Mexican? We went to get Mexican <laughs> for three hours. We, we're together. We, I genuinely, genuinely love these guys. Yeah. 
These are my best friends. These are my brothers. There is there is n almost nothing I'd rather do than than be hanging out with these guys. It's so, actually yeah. weird because you miss each other when you're not working. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because like when you work, you're literally together all the time. I see these guys more than my wife. And then when like you you like I'll see you in ten days. It's like what is that? That's so far. It feels years. wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We that's have this good. saying where we say we'll see you in twelve hours because that's what our life is. We literally see each other every day. Yeah. Well, uh, everyone at home, you guys can see them on the 22nd. Okay. Okay. There it is, tw October 22nd on TBS, uh, the Misery Index premieres. Uh, so definitely tune in for that. Uh, the tickets are on sale for Radio City right now, so get your tickets. Uh, if you're going to be... <laughs> it's your fault you got tequila in the back. I'm sorry. <laughs> they were literally like, it's noon, you want tequila? And I'm Wait, like, yeah, Jamila, any, yeah, Jamila, any closing thoughts? Oh, October 22nd. Yeah, you got to watch the show. I thank God for the British. That's the only accent you can still do today. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is good. You can Crushed always, it. You can always do the British accent. It's Crushed great. it. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us. Guys, make a ridiculous amount of noise for Joe Murray and Q over here to Tenderloins. Tenderloins.